The Crocodile's Toothache Poem by Shel Silverstein The crocodile went to the dentist and sat down in the chair. And the dentist said, Now tell me, sir, why does it hurt and where? And the crocodile said, I'll tell you the truth. I have a terrible ache in my tooth. And he opened his jaws so wide, so wide, that the dentist, he climbed right inside. And the dentist laughed, oh, isn't this fun, as he pulled the teeth out one by one. And the crocodile cried, you're hurting me so. Please put down your pliers and let me go. But the dentist just laughed with a ho, ho, ho. And he said, I still have 12 to go. Oops. That's the wrong one, I confess. But what's one crocodile tooth, more or less? Then suddenly the jaws went snap, and the dentist was gone right off the map. And where he went, one could only guess, to north or south or east or west. He left no forwarding address. But what's one dentist, more or less? I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy and McKay. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry. I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks. I've counted sixteen chicken pox, and there's one more, that's seventeen. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue. It might be instamatic flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke. I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hips hurt when I move my chin, my belly buttons caving in. My back is wretched, my ankles sprained, my appendix pains each time it rains. My nose is cold, my toes are numb. I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff. My voice is weak. I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is filled up my mouth. I think my hair is falling out. My elbow's bent. My spine ain't straight. My temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk. I cannot hear. There is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail and my heart is what? What's that? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye. I'm going to play. A Giraffe and a Half by Shel Silverstein. A Giraffe and a Half. If you had a giraffe and he stretched another half, you would have a giraffe and a half. If he put on a hat and inside lived a rat, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat. If you dressed him in a suit, and he looked very cute. You would have a giraffe and a half and a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit. If you glued a rose to the tip of his nose, you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose. If a bumble old bee stung him right on the knee, you would have a giraffe and a half with a hat in his rat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee. If he put on a shoe and then stepped in some glue, you would have a giraffe and a half and a rat in his hat, looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe. 
if you gave him a flute and he played tooty toot you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute if he used a chair to comb his hair you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot in a flute with a chair in his hair if he tripped on a snake who was eating some cake you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake if he found an old trunk and inside was a skunk you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk if he met a fat dragon who sat on a wagon you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon if he jumped on a bike and rode over a spike you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a spike in his bike if a blubbery whale got a hold of his tail you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat on his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a spike in his bike and a whale on his tail if he fell in a hole that was dug by a mole you would have a giraffe and a half with a rat in his hat looking cute in a suit with a rose on his nose and a bee on his knee and some glue on his shoe playing toot on a flute with a chair in his hair and a snake eating cake and a skunk in a trunk and a dragon in a wagon and a bike on his spike and a whale on his tail in a hole with a mole but if you brought him a pole to climb out of the hole and the whale left his tail and went off for the mail and he gave the spiked bike to a scout on a hike and he left the fat dragon because his wagon was sagging and he gave his chair to a tired old bear and he traded the flute to a bird for some fruit and he told that old snake to go jump in the lake and the man who bought junk bought the trunk and the skunk and he gave the rose to a girl he chose while the bee on his knee flew away with a flea and he put the shoe with the glue on you and that silly old rat ran away with his hat and he put his suit in the laundry chute and he shrank another half you would have a giraffe Clooney the Clown by Shel Silverstein I'll tell you the story of Clooney the Clown who worked in a circus that came through town. 
His shoes were too big and his hat was too small. But he just wasn't, just wasn't funny at all. He had a trombone to play loud, silly tunes. He had a green dog and a thousand balloons. He was floppy and sloppy and skinny and tall. But he just wasn't, just wasn't funny at all. And every time he did a trick, everyone felt a little sick. And every time he told, told a joke, folks sighed as if their hearts were broke. And every time he lost a shoe, everyone looked awful blue. And every time he stood on his head, everyone screamed, go back to bed. And every time he made a leap, everybody fell asleep. And every time he ate his tie, everybody began to cry. And Clooney could not make any money simply because he was not funny. One day he said, I'll tell this town how it feels to be an unfunny clown. And he told them all why he looked so sad. And he told them all why he felt so bad. He told of pain and rain and cold. He told of darkness in his soul. And after he finished his tale of woe, did everyone cry? Oh, no, no, no. They laughed until they shook with trees, with ha-ha-has and he-he-he's. They laughed with howls and yowls and shrieks. They laughed all day, they laughed all week. They laughed until they had a fit, they laughed until their jackets split. The laughter spread for miles around, to every city, every town, over mountains across the sea, from Saint-Tropez to Mont-Saint-Denis. And soon the whole world rang with laughter, lasting till forever after. While Clooney stood in the circus tent, with his head drooped low and his shoulders bent. And he said, this is not what I meant. I'm funny just by accident. And while the whole world laughed outside, Clooney the clown sat down and cried. Enter This Deserted House Poem by Shel Silverstein But please walk softly as you do Frogs dwell here and crickets too Ain't no ceiling, only blue Jays dwell here and sunbeams too Floors are flowers, take a few Ferns grow here and daisies too Whoosh, swoosh, to wit to woo. Bats dwell here, and hoot owls too. Ha ha ha, he he, hoo hoo. Gnomes dwell here, and goblins too. And my child, I thought you knew. I dwell here, and so do you. Sarah, Cynthia, Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. Poem by Shel Silverstein Sarah, Cynthia, Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the yams and spice the hams. And though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. And so it piled up to the ceilings, Coffee grounds, potato peelings, brown banana, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the window and blocked the door. With bacon rinds and chicken bones, drippy ends of ice cream cones, prune pits, peach pits, orange peel, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal, pizza crusts and withered greens, Soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of black burned buttered toast, grisly bits of BC roasts, <clears throat> grisly bits of beefy roasts, 
The garbage rolled on down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, globs of goopy bubble gum, cellophane with green baloney, rubber, blueberry, macaroni. Rubbery, blueberry, macaroni. Peanut butter caked and dry, curdled milk and crusts of pie, mouldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard, cold French fries and rancid meat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat, yellow lumps of cream of wheat. At last the garbage reached so high, and finally it touched the sky, and all the neighbours moved away, and none of her friends would come to play. And finally, Sarah. And finally, <coughs> and finally, Sarah Cynthia Stout said, "Okay, I'll take the garbage out." But then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state, from New York to the Golden Gate, and here in the garbage she did hate. Poor Sarah met an awful fate. That I cannot, right now, relate, because the hour is much too late. But children, remember Sarah Stout, and always take the garbage out. The Dirtiest Man in the World, a poem by Shel Silverstein. Oh, I'm Dirty Dan, the world's dirtiest man. I never have taken a shower. I can't see my shirt; it's so covered with dirt. My ears have enough to grow flowers, but the water is either a little too hot or else it's a little too cold. I'm musty and dusty and patchy and scratchy, and mangy and covered with mould. But the water is always a little too hot, or else it's a little too cold. I live in a pen with five hogs and a hen and three squizzly lizards who creep in my bed and they itch as I squirm and I twitch in the cruddy old sheets that I sleep in. If you look down my throat with a flashlight, you'd note. That my insides are coated with rust. I creak when I walk, and I squeak when I talk, and each time I sneeze, I blow dust. The thought of a towel and some soap makes me howl. And when people have something to tell me, they don't come and tell it. They stand back and yell it. I think they're afraid they might smell me. The bed bugs that leap on me sing me to sleep, and the garbage flies buzz me awake. They're the best friends I've found, and I fear they might drown, so I never go too near a lake. Each evening at nine, I sat down to dine with the termites who live in my chair, and I joke with the bats, and have intimate chats with the cooties who crawl through my hair. I'd brighten my life if I just found a wife, but I fear that that never will be, until I can find. A girl gentle and kind, with a beautiful face and a sensitive mind, who sparkles and twinkles and glistens and shines, and who's almost as dirty as me. The Giving Tree, by Shel Silverstein. Once there was a tree. And she loved a little boy. And every day, the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk. And swing from her branches, and eat apples, and they would play hide and go seek. 
and when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by. And the tree was often alone. Then one day the boy came to the tree. And the tree said, Come boy, come. Come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and play in my shade and be happy. I am too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money, and you will be happy. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy. And she said, come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife and I want children, and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house. But you may cut off my branches and build a house. Then you will be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy she could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered. Come and play. I am too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And the tree was happy, but not really. And after a long time, the boy came back again. I am sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. You cannot swing on them. I'm too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I am too tired to climb, said the boy. I am sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left, just this stump. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I am very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as he could. Well, an old stump is good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit down. Sit down and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end.